by a phone there. Now I'm going to be joined live by Gordon Hahn. He's a senior associate at the Center for International Strategy joining us live. Thank you very much for taking some of your day to speak with us about this. We've got two deadly explosions in the space of 24 hours in Volgograd here. What do you think can be done to try and secure a city, especially in if this is confirmed to be a terror attack in the event of what uh, law enforcement tends to call these lone wolf attacks, where it's a person determined to do a evil act? And how do you guard against something like that? Well, it's very difficult to uh, guard against lone wolves or even uh, organized uh, suicide plots. Uh, very difficult indeed, unless the intelligence or police uncover information beforehand, then it's up to local citizens to be vigilant. But generally speaking, for uh, any country, any city, uh, it's very difficult to uh, prevent these kinds of attacks. Now, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Russian geography and cities and such here, but why do you think Volgograd in this case is being targeted rather than, say, Moscow or St. Petersburg or even, for example, Sochi, the site of the Olympics? Well, they may have decided that it's harder for them to uh, penetrate Moscow. There have been a couple of plots uncovered by the security agencies and police uh, in Moscow over the last few months. So they have make, may have come to the conclusion that it would be easier to strike a Russian city uh, uh, closer to the North Caucasus, and uh, Volgograd would, would fit the bill. Also, remember there was an attack earlier in the week in Yadikovsk, Stavropol, uh, which um, could also hasn't been determined yet who was behind that attack. There was an explosion. They're searching for two people with uh, Caucasus appearances. So we may have actually have a third. Uh, Attack and maybe uh, attack involving uh, involving uh, probably the Caucasus December and Mujahideen in the last week. Now, in both these instances, we have major transportation hubs that have been targeted. What uh, practical steps are people doing, officials doing, and what can uh, regular commuters and officials do to make sure that transport systems are not so vulnerable for a, to attack like this? Well, the best thing you can do is uh, have people at. Uh, one or more uh, entrances, uh, checking people, watching people uh, closely, and then again, the population has to uh, be has to be vigilant. That's all you can really do. At this point, what kind of conclusions could you draw about who could be behind it? Well, odds are that since all the suicide bombings that have occurred in Russia have been carried out by the Caucasus um, uh, Emirate Mujahideen, uh, about. Now this would be the uh, if this was if this was in, indeed a suicide bombing and then the first one of Volgograd was this would be the 53rd and 54th since the founding of the Caucasus Emirate. Um, it's very likely that the Dagestan network, so-called Dagestan Ziliat of the Caucasus Emirate, was involved. And if we're talking about ethnic Russian suicide bombers, they've been very active in re trying to recruit ethnic Russian suicide bombers. For example, the October blast in Volgograd involving a um, uh, female suicide bomber was organized by a uh, ethnic Russian Mujahideen working with the Dagestan Viliyat uh, and the uh, perpetrator, the female perpetrator, perpetrator was also uh, an ethnic Russian. Um, so that's the most likely. The, another possible ter interpretation is there is a Mujahideen who joined the Caucasus, uh, converted to Islam about a decade ago and then eventually joined the Caucasus and Mujahideen. He's a former Russian military <clears throat> person by the name of Pavel Kosolapov and he's from Volgograd. And he was involved in a train bombing back in 2007 and, and suspected in several other bombings. And he also claimed that he was involved in, in the Nevsky Express bombing of the train in 2009. Now, it's possible, him, he being from Volgograd, he's been rather silent ever since that 2009 attack. So he could conceivably have been planning all these uh, years for, uh, you know, a big show running up to the Sochi Olympics. What do you make about the, about the timing of the attack? Why now, as opposed to, say, uh, in February, for example, or during the uh, nationwide holidays that happened at the beginning of January here? That's a good question. You know, uh, it, it seems that it's very possible that these attacks are more driven by the upcoming holiday. Sometimes the, the, the determination of the timing of the attacks is that simply the uh, suicide bomber and or planners are ready to go and they don't want to wait uh, in the event that they might be uh, uncovered or that the suicide bomber might, might back out if you're talking about the calculations of the handlers. So um, 
it's hard to tell. Generally speaking, these things are planned, uh, you know, a couple of months in advance. Again, they may this may have been something they wanted to wait and hold off on to hold to do just on the eve of the Olympics to scare people off from attending. Uh, but circumstances forced them to act earlier. Um, what do you think could be done on an international level to help combat global terror like this? And just a note to our viewers here, uh, this is live video from the scene of this latest uh, incident in Volgograd that we're looking at here. Well, the most obvious thing is we have to have good international cooperation uh, between all countries, and we have to be, uh, at least I think here in the United States, um, uh, sometimes we actually ought to believe what the Russians say about the nature of uh, terrorism in the North Caucasus. Uh, we have a there's a tendency in the United States not to take what the Russians say seriously about terrorism in the North Caucasus, and that's one of the things I think that led to the the lone wolf style attack uh, in Boston. Although, as we remember, the Sarnaev uh, elder Sarnaev brother Tamerlan uh, attempted to join up with the Dagestan Viliad of the Caucasus Emir when he traveled to the region uh, in 2012. So um, again, uh, cooperation and um, uh, in certain terms of relations between Western countries and Russian countries, a little bit more trust when it comes to the issue of terrorism. All right, Gordon Hahn, Senior Associate at the Center of International Strategy, thank you very much for your time and insight. Thank you very much.